everyone. This is Heather with Young and Savvy Genealogist. And today I want to talk about how I use Microsoft Access for genealogy. I'm not going to be talking about how to use Access. I'm just going to be talking about the different applications that I use it for, how you can get access to it, and how it can be a powerful tool to help you manage your different data that you're generating for genealogy and how it could possibly be a better choice for you than other tools such as other Microsoft products and even something like Evernote. Okay, so to talk a little bit about what Access is, Microsoft Access is a database software. Like for example, I have an inventory that I've built for my DNA matches. Okay, so anything that you would want to create a database for, which that is a lot of different things in genealogy, Microsoft Access will have the tools that you need in order to create that database. Once it's all built and pretty and functioning, it's no more difficult to use than PowerPoint. But when you get under the hood and you're actually talking about building something, it is very similar in how it functions to Excel. So you don't really need to know any type of coding. You don't need to have a separate website. This is a standalone program that you have on your computer um, in the same type of packages where you get Microsoft Word or Excel or PowerPoint. So a lot of the functionality is going to be the same to those programs and it cooperates seamlessly with all of those programs. So the packages that you need to have in order to get access to Microsoft Access, it's the professional package or above. So if you have access to Microsoft Office Professional, you already have access to Microsoft Access. That package retails for $399 here in the US. You can also get access as a standalone software for $109, but there are cheap ways to get access to anything you want. And Microsoft Access and Microsoft Office for that matter are no different. So if you work for a corporation, various types of businesses, or for the government, you can get access to Microsoft Office Professional at a very steep discount. So check with your employer to see if that applies to you. My husband works for the government, so I was able to get a license to Microsoft Office Professional for $10. And that's, I think, for at least two or three different machines. So in terms of what I use Microsoft Access for, there are so many different applications that um, I've never found the same type of functionality in any other program that I've used. And I'm a big tech genealogist, so I've tried them all. I've tried Office, I've tried Excel, I've tried Evernote, I've tried OneNote, I've tried all of these different tools and I didn't like any of them because I found that no matter what tool I was using, I was spending more time duplicating my efforts and typing things than I wasn't actually getting my work done. Okay, so when I created forms in Microsoft, uh, in Microsoft Word, I was copying and pasting reports and then entering all of that information onto the report and then storing that information in Google Drive and then going up and finding that same report, bringing it up, typing stuff in, saving it, wanting to save multiple copies in, in case, you know, I changed something on it and then I ended up deleting a piece of information that ended up being really important. You know, I'm, I'm creating all of these various copies of this report and I have to create one of those reports for each person that I'm researching. And so keeping track of all of those reports was getting really, really cumbersome and I didn't like it. And I was running into that same problem with OneNote and Evernote. I was spending more time duplicating work than I was getting work done. So the applications that you can use to um, eliminate this work, you can do that for research logs. You can do that for uh, tracking all of the different documentation that you find. I use it as a research trip planner, so you can see here that I have it built specifically 
as a planner for the Family History Library in Salt Lake City, but you can use it for any other type of repository, any place that you plan on making a research trip to, and you want to keep track of the different sources and the families that they apply to, you can do that from Microsoft Access by creating a database. I also use Microsoft Access to create source citations. So instead of going in and digging out the copies that I made from Evidence Explained by Elizabeth Schoen Mills, I have forms that I've created for all of the different types of source citations. So I can click on that button, it'll bring up a menu, and on that menu are all the different types of source citations that I have wanted to create. I can create them for specific sources like Google Books. I can create them for a wide variety of sources like books in general. I can do multi-volume sets. I can do websites. I can do Ancestry.com census records. Um, any type of source citation that I need to create, I can use Access to take the work out of that for me. Um, for those of you who are keeping track of LDS Temple Ordinances, that is one of the easiest things that you can possibly build in here um, because it's just a series of check boxes. The first and last name of the person, I type those in, and then I click the check boxes for, for all of the ordinances for that person. And once I've done that, it's done. And of course, I've talked a little bit about my DNA matching inventory. So for all of the different websites that I use making DNA matches, so GEDmatch, Family Tree DNA, and Ancestry DNA, I have a database running together of all of the different matches that I've made on those websites. I can sort it by the chromosome, I can sort it by the segment length, I can sort it by SNPs if I wanted to, I can sort it by the website that I have those matches made on. I can, there, there's so much potential for that, um, including in creating my own types of DNA circles. And so that would have to be a completely separate presentation on how I use that for DNA matching, but it is seriously one of the best tools that I have ever come up with in how to create better DNA matches. So today I wanted to talk specifically about how I use Microsoft Access for my research logs. So here's an example of a research log that I have created. This is a form, this is not the log itself. So this is where I enter all my data. And building this form is no more complicated than building a slide on a PowerPoint presentation. You start with a blank slide and you can put background images in here. You throw text boxes on here. You can put pictures on here. You can see I have our site logo here. And then you have your text boxes here that is linked to um, kind of your under the hood elements that are more like Excel. And so those cells determine what text boxes come up here. And so I've created a fully customizable research log. So you see I've got the name of the person, my research objectives, my goals, the sources that I've used, the repositories that I've checked, and what the results of my research were. Now I realize that people include a lot more stuff on their research logs than that. You can add those things, you can take away from this, you can create whatever type of research log that you want, and when this is sorted by person, it will continue to add to the file of that same individual without having to go and find a copy of whatever research log you've already created. Generating reports is a completely different step from this, and so that's what we're going to talk about next. This is the report that I have created for Pomp Fenity. This is my entire research log for him. So every different research objective, every different goal, all of the different repositories, all of that research for my research log can be included on one piece of paper without it ever actually having to be a piece of paper. I'm very anti-paper in my research, and so anything I can do to get away from using paper, I'll do. And this has been one of the best tools for me to be able to do that. In the same way that I can customize the data entry form, I can also customize my report. 
And so that information that I was typing into that form from the last slide creates the report on this slide. So I can customize it in any type of color, in any type of font. I can make it bigger or smaller. I can include certain information, but not include other information. So if I, if all of the information that I'm looking at comes from the same source and I don't want to take up room on my report for that source, I can take this column out, create a completely different report, um, save that and without having to change the fact that I've already created this report. So I can generate any number of reports with just a couple of mouse clicks and that's it. I don't have to retype or copy and paste any of that information. It will do it for me. It provides all of the same functionality um, that any other type of Microsoft Office program gives you. It uses the Microsoft ribbon menus so you don't have to learn how to use a, a completely new program. If you know how to use Microsoft Word or Excel or PowerPoint, you already know how to use Access. And that was something that I did not find to be true using Evernote. You're able to create any combination of reports for any number of people or families without having to create a whole new set of reports and retyping all of that information. Other applications that you can use this for, hey genealogists especially, there's a lot more potential here than what I've shown you in terms of client tracking. So you can create a database of your clients that you've had in the past, what research you did for them, how much you charged them. Any of that information you need to keep track of your clients, you can build that as a separate function of your database. You can also do inventory tracking. So if you're selling actual genealogy products, you can keep track of an inventory, how much of something do you have left before you have to reorder? Anything like that. You can keep track of all of those office type of expenses without having to use a separate program like Excel. You can have all of that under the hood in the same program. The one drawback to using Access is that it is not very portable. Your access database can only be used on a computer that has access. So if you're going to a library and you want to add some information or something that you just found and you want to add it to your access database, you may have to wait until you get home because not every computer in a repository is going to have Microsoft Office Professional. There is the capability for access to be portable but it's through Microsoft SharePoint or other types of services like that. And those licenses cost several hundred dollars because they're mainly marketed towards businesses that are looking to cover multiple machines for a medium to large size company. So that accessibility is there, but you have to use SharePoint and create a web app buying that license just for you to be able to use it really isn't something that's cost effective. And if you're able to build a web app like that, you're talking being able to build mobile applications for a smartphone, you're able to build mobile mobile websites that you're able to access with any internet connection from any device. And so that potential is there. So that's how I use Microsoft Access for research reports and a couple of other things check back soon because I may create more kind of how-to guides and how I use access for these other different tools. I haven't shown you everything I use it for, but you'll see that I'm discovering new ways to use it all the time. And so there is always going to be more to see. So check us out on our blog on youngandsavvygenealogist.blogspot.com. You can also check us out on Twitter at ysgenealogists. And be sure to click through to YouTube and comment and subscribe and like. And thank you so much for stopping by, and we hope to see you again.